Good morning students. Um, today we are going to continue what we have left behind yesterday, derived units. Uh, yesterday, if you remember from yesterday's class, derived units are those units which depend on two or more fundamental units and we were on the verge of deriving units, finding out units of different derived quantities and we have uh, done five physical quantities we have derived units of five physical quantities yesterday if you remember these are area volume density velocity and acceleration okay today we are going to start from number six that is force what is force if you remember <coughs> force is an external factor an external factor which changes which changes or tends to change position shape or state of a body an external factor if by applying an external factor the body changes its position or its shape or a state of motion state of um, motion to rest or state of rest to motion then it is called force and uh, we know the SI unit of force SI unit of force is assigned as Newton in the honor of Sir Isaac Newton it is abbreviated as capital N now mathematically <coughs> Mathematically, we can write force is equals to, according to second law of motion, we have derived um, the mathematical relationship of force in second law of motion, Newton's law of motion, that is mass into acceleration. Okay, here you can see that mass is a fundamental quantity, but acceleration is a derived quantity. So you need to um, deduce acceleration into fundamental quantities as well. So mass into acceleration, we all know it is change in velocity divided by time. And to remove the confusion, I'm going to separate the time um, from here. Change in velocity into 1 upon time. So by separating the terms like this, this it will remove the confusion now mass into change in velocity one second we know it displacement divided by time into one upon time so up to here you can see that all terms have been reduced into fundamental terms fundamental quantities mass is fundamental quantity displacement and time as well are fundamental quantities and since all terms are now fundamental quantities we can use you can take unit of all terms taking unit of all terms we know unit of force is Newton unit of mass is kg unit of displacement is meter unit of time is second and again one upon unit of time is second so it gives you kg meter slash second square so Newton or unit of force depends upon four different fundamental units that is kg meter second and second that's why it is derived in now give conclusion since the unit of force depends on four different fundamental quantities and they are kg meter second and second it is derived unit okay sorry I uh, made a mistake it's not quantity it should be unit okay so I hope it will not uh, get lead to any confusion once again once again, 
So force, force is an external factor which changes or tends to change position, shape or state of a body. An SI unit of force is assigned as Newton in the honor of Sir Isaac Newton. And mathematically speaking, this is according to second law of Newton's second law of motion. Force is equals to mass into acceleration. So mass is a fundamental quantity, but acceleration is derived quantity. So we need to deduce it into fundamental terms. And this acceleration is defined as change in velocity divided by time. And we separated time into separate uh, different part. Okay, because we need to change this velocity because velocity is also a derived quantity. It is not fundamental term and we need to deduce this as well. That's why we have separated time over here and then mass same as above change in velocity means displacement upon time and into one upon time. Now since all terms have been deduced into fundamental terms at this stage we can take unit of all terms that gives us Newton equals to kg into meter per second into one upon second that means kg meter slash second square and since um, the Newton depends upon <coughs> four different fundamental units that is kg meter second and second it is a derived unit okay now let's go to next one okay next one uh, we have work slash energy Okay. If we need to define energy, we said that energy is the capacity possessed by a body to perform work. Okay, And work is defined as the amount of energy being converted from one form, transformed from one form to another form, um, is defined as work. And physically speaking, work is said to be done if force is applied on certain object and by applying that much force the object covers certain displacement then work is said to be done that means if you push a car if you push a car by applying certain force but the car does not move then there is no work but if car moves in the direction of force um for certain distance in same direction in the, uh, in the direction of force, then work is said to be done. Likewise, if I push a wall, and suppose this is me, okay, I'm not this one's lean, okay, then again, suppose this is me, and I'm pushing the wall, but uh, by pushing wall, the wall does not move, absolutely wall does not move. I'm applying force, but still, I am not doing any, fo any work, okay, because the wall does not move. Physically, I am not doing any work. And of course, chemically, I'm doing work because um, chemical energy of my muscles are being converted into potential energy. However, in this case, if a dozer, a bulldozer came on the way, okay, a bulldozer came on the way and it uh, pushes the wall by its extraordinary force, then you can say that the wall will collapse or the wall will move in the direction of force so bulldozer is applying force and the wall although in fragment it moves a certain distance in that case the bulldozer has done work although i have not done any work so um work has two components these are force applied and displacement so we can define work as work is said to be done if force is applied on a body and the body covers certain distance in the direction of force and mathematically Since work depends on two factors, we can say that work is equals to force into displacement. F into D. Now, you can see force is a derived quantity whereas displacement is a fundamental quantity. That's why we do not need to reduce displacement but we need to reduce force into fundamental quantities. Now, we 
all know we have just done this yes force is equals to mass into acceleration and displacement is as it is now once again we can see mass is now fundamental quantity displacement is already a fundamental quantity but acceleration here is not a fundamental quantity it is derived quantity so we need to reduce acceleration as well acceleration equals to change in velocity divided by time into displacement and once again can you see that uh, change in velocity is still a derived quantity whereas time is a fundamental quantity we still need to reduce change in velocity into fundamental quantities that's why i'm going to separate this fundamental quantity from this term so we can write it as mass into velocity into <coughs> this time has been separated one upon time velocity upon time means velocity into one upon time and displacement is already there Of this velocity we know that it is fundamental it is not fundamental quantity we need to reduce this velocity means displacement divided by time and rest of the terms we have to copy it one upon time into displacement now you can see all the terms are reduced into fundamental quantities mass is fundamental quantity displacement time time and displacement all of them are fundamental quantity so at this stage we can take unit of all terms taking unit of all terms we get now si unit of work has been assigned as joule joule okay si unit of work has been assigned as joule and uh, si unit of mass is kg displacement meter time second into one upon time second into displacement meter so it gives us kg meter square slash second square kg meter square slash second square so si unit of uh, work is joule and joule uh, the component of joules are kg meter square second square so you can see the unit of uh, work that means joule depends upon five different fundamental units these are kg meter meter second and second so it is a derived unit now give conclusion since unit of work that is joule depends on five fundamental units and they are kg meter meter second and second it is derived unit okay once again let's revise it um, you can see this is work number seven work work is said to be done if force is applied on a body and the body covers certain distance in the direction of force and mathematically work is equals to force into displacement are you getting it uh, work is equals to force into displacement and here displacement is already a fundamental quantity but force is derived quantity force is not a fundamental quantity so we need to reduce force into the uh, fundamental quantities so we know force is equals to mass into acceleration from newton's second law of motion and displacement is copied as such now mass is already a fundamental quantity now acceleration is not a fundamental quantity we need to reduce it into fundamental terms that means change in velocity by time into displacement as such now once again this velocity is not a fundamental quantity it is still derived quantity we still need to reduce it into fundamental terms so we have separated velocity and time now velocity is displacement upon time rest of the terms are copied as such now since all the terms are uh, fundamental quantities we can take unit of all terms at this stage by taking unit unit of work is considered as joule unit of mass kg displacement meter time second time second and displacement 
meter so it gives us kg meter square or second square so since a unit of work depends on five different fundamental units that means kg meter meter second and second it is a derived unit now let's go to number eight number eight is power okay if you are asked what is power then um probably you all already know this you have started it from grade seven and in grade eight as well you studied about work energy power power is the rate of doing work okay power is a uh, power does not define how strong you are okay the strength <coughs> determines how much work you can do that determines strength but power determines how fast you can do your work in per second time how much work can you perform that determines your power okay so if i ask i'm um, to ask among horse and elephant which one is strong definitely elephant is strong but which one is powerful definitely horse might be powerful than elephant because horse runs very fast okay now um defining power power is defined as rate of doing work and it's si unit si unit of power is assigned as what w now um as we know or mathematically I told you power is defined as rate of doing work that means amount of work done per unit time so power can be calculated by dividing work done by time work upon time now once again look here we are going to repeat the same step work done is derived quantity but time is fundamental quantity so we need to reduce work done into fundamental terms whereas time is same time remains same so we are um, separating these two terms work into one upon time now work done we all know it is force into displacement force into displacement work done is force into displacement and don't forget to copy one upon time now force is still not a fundamental quantity it is derived quantity so we still need to change this that means mass into acceleration displacement is still here into one open time is still here these two are copied from a, a previous step now mass it is already fundamental quantity but acceleration we still need to reduce it so mass into uh, change in velocity divided by time into displacement into one upon time okay once again time is fundamental quantity but velocity is a derived quantity we still need to reduce velocity that's why uh, let's separate it mass into velocity into one upon time into displacement into one upon time now we all know velocity is defined as displacement divided by time and we still have one upon time from here from here we still have displacement and from here we still have one upon time now you can see all terms have been reduced into fundamental quantities okay mass displacement time time displacement time at this stage we can take unit of all terms taking unit of all terms uh, power unit of power is what unit of mass kg unit of displacement meter unit of time second one upon again unit of time second unit of displacement meter and unit of time one upon second so it gives you kg meter square per second cube okay so uh, si unit of power is what which consists of kg meter square per second
cube. So it shows that SI unit of power depends upon 5, 6, 6 fundamental units. They are kg, meter, meter and second, second, second. That's how it is derived in it. Now let's keep conclusion. Since unit of power that is what depends on 6 fundamental units and they are kg meter meter second 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 it is derived unit okay let's go through it once again what we did yesterday were very easy one but today um, these are more complicated power power is defined as the rate of doing work and SI unit of power is what mathematically speaking power is equals to work done by time and work done is uh, derived quantity we need to reduce it that's why we have separated it into like this work done into one upon time and work done is force into displacement and one upon time has been copied from here and um, force once again force is derived quantity we need to reduce it into fundamental quantities and from Newton's second law of motion we know that force is equal to mass into acceleration and uh, displacement has been copied from here and one upon time has been copied from here now mass is a fundamental quantity but acceleration is not a fundamental quantity we need to reduce it and we know that acceleration is equals to change in velocity divided by time and displacement and one upon time has been copied from previous um, step now mass uh, is fundamental quantity now change in velocity we need to reduce it that's why velocity by time has been separated as velocity into one upon time other terms have been copied from previous step the mass into velocity means displacement upon time into one upon time into displacement into one upon time now since all the terms have been reduced into fundamental quantities we can take unit of all terms at this stage that means kg meter per second one upon second into meter into one upon second it keeps us kg meter square per second cube and since unit of power depends on six fundamental units it is derived unit okay next number we have pressure um, pressure is defined as the amount of force applied perpendicularly on unit surface area how much force is being applied on one meter square surface area that is called pressure and it's SI unit SI unit of pressure has been assigned as um, Pascal PA <coughs> it is uh, the USI unit as in as of pressure has been assigned as Pascal in the honor of uh, Blaise Pascal you all know him now mathematically speaking pressure is defined as since it is um, amount of force applied perpendicularly on unit surface area then you can find it by dividing force by area pressure is force by area now you can see both force and area are derived quantities you need to reduce both of them into fundamental quantities so i'm going to write force is mass into acceleration whereas area is length into break I am assuming that the surface is regular okay now mass is fundamental length is fundamental breadth is fundamental but acceleration is not fundamental we need to reduce acceleration so we are going to separate acceleration from this um, cluster length into breadth into acceleration now what is acceleration you all know it okay 
acceleration is change in velocity by time taken. Okay, once again, uh, velocity is fundament not fundamental quantity, but time is fundamental quantity. That's why I'm going to separate time from here because we still need to change our velocity into fundamental quantity. So we, I'm going to write it as velocity into one upon time. So velocity upon time can be written as velocity into one upon time. Mass in by length into breadth into velocity means displacement upon time into one upon time okay now you can see all the terms has been uh, reduced into fundamental quantities mass length breadth displacement and time all of them are fundamental quantities so at this stage we can take unit of all terms taking unit of all terms then what you get a uh, unit of pressure is pascal or pa is equals to unit of mass is kg unit of length meter and unit of breadth meter unit of displacement again meter unit of time second and one upon unit of time second so you can see meter meter can be cancelled so it gives you kg slash meter second square kg in denominator meter and second square are in denominator so you can see that uh, actually unit of si unit of pascal depends upon one two three four five six it depends upon six fundamental units actually these are cancelled uh, then again we need to count them as it's as a constituent of pascal so unit of pascal depends upon six fundamental units it is called derived unit let's give conclusion since unit of pressure or pascal depends on 6